Halo, oke. Okay. Isra. Hai. Isra. Hey folks, so we are here we are talking about re-enabling Kata Kaneers with Moby and uh, staff engineer from Ancoop and uh, I'm Corey Snyder, a uh, software engineer at Morantis and a maintainer on the Moby project. So today, uh, we're going to be going through re-enabling CATA containers with Moby, starting with the history. What happened to break CATA containers with Moby? Why things went south? How we fixed it? The future? And f wrapping up with a nice little demo. Wish us luck. So starting off with the history. Beginning of Docker, it was just a single, single monolithic binary that did everything, everything related to containers. From what I hear, it's before my time, but even the command line was part of the same binary. Yeah. Uh, there was a component called libcontainer that handled the actual low-level bits. And in uh, 2015, the uh, Open Container Project, now known as the Open Container Initiative, was formed to make uh, containers more vendor neutral. As part of this effort, Docker modified libcontainer to run independently and donated it to the Open Container Initiative as run C. Uh, they then followed up a few months later by releasing container D, a daemon, for controlling run C. And then a few months after that, in 2016, container D and run C were incorporated back into Docker Engine version 1.11. And so due to that shift in architecture, oh, excuse me. Apologies. Due to that shift in architecture, it was uh, now possible to substitute a different low-level runtime without changing the higher-level components. And then first-class support for multiple runtimes was added to Docker 1.12. Now with that, any number of runtimes can be plugged into Docker Engine so long as they follow the same command line interface as run C. The command line interface has since been formalized as the OCI runtime command line interface, which is not to be confused with the OCI runtime specification. The runtime command line interface uh, is merely one possible API which an OCI compliant runtime uh, may choose to support. And then, uh, 2017, the Moby project was launched as the upstream open source product project for the Docker engine. And as well, Kata containers. Yeah, with that, since Docker has support, opened the option to support different runtime, we started Kata containers. It was a merge of two already open source projects, Run C, or uh, sorry, Run V and Clean Containers, and uh, we hosted this. We merged the two projects and the card containers and hosted it in Open Infra Foundation. And within, within them, of, we provide speed of container and the security of virtual machines. And this is the initial card containers architecture. The idea is that we pretend the card containers is a swapping replacement of Run C. And as you can see, there are many components. We have a card shim, then that is essentially like a uh, container D shim, and uh, we, we also have, have card runtime is a command line interface as run C, and also a proxy to, to allow, allow us to talk to the virtual machine via uh, a virtual um, port, I think zero, zero port, yes. And we, we need a uh, YAMAX to do, uh, to, to, to do multiplexing, and we have the card agent inside the virtual machine to, to actually spawn the containers inside, the, inside of it. So what happened? So what happened? Well, all comes down to uh, the runtime interface v2. Oh, so so uh, yeah, container D does not directly launch those uh, low-level runtimes like run C. It actually launches a uh, lightweight daemon subprocess known that is known as the shim. Uh, and then it issues uh, RPC commands instructing the shim to drive the runtime. Now, the reason for this architecture and this intermediate process uh, is that it allows containers to survive a sudden restart of container D. 
way. Yeah, sorry. So yeah, yeah, with with Kennedy to uh, to app, with with that Chimui to interface, Kata is able to simplify its own arch architecture. So then we combine the Kata different Kata schemes of this import in, and also the proxy into a single container Chimui two process. So this greatly simplifies the Kata architecture and uh, deployment simplicity and also performance and uh, density. All, the, all this come to this new Kata architecture. And uh, with, but in the Adobe side, Adobe did have support for container D runtime v2 for quite some time, but it only support it is only supported with limit, limited fashion. While support of multiple runtime was retained, it was done so by hard coding the use of run C shim. So cut shim is not possible for that in that case. And also it, it instructs the shim to execute a different runtime binary. Essentially, it, it used the new API to implement the existing behavior, but nothing more. So it's a blockage for Karashim V2. And uh, with the, and then, and then time we released Kata 2.0 and the production ready solution for Vim based containers. And uh, because we can, the initial architecture is too, too heavy for production, we, we decided not to support it. And at that time, we dropped Docker support as well, and Bobby's at that moment. So yeah, things went south because Moby <laughs> lagged behind in supporting other runtime v2 shims. And well, Kata needed that support. So. With Kata 2.0, that support was lost. Now, how we fixed it? Well, the first step in getting Moby and Kata containers working together again was adding support to Moby to select other container D runtime v2 shims. Interestingly, uh, enabling Kata containers was merely a side benefit of the work. The main reason why I added that functionality was to allow uh, MCR, Mirantis Container Runtime, our commercially supported Moby distribution, to ship distro packages for another runtime, which actually doesn't need its own C run, so that uh, it could be installed side by side with uh, Run C and used without any additional configuration. Now, uh, C run is a drop and replace for Run C, as I mentioned and so could already be used with uh, Moby without any modification, but side-by-side -side installation would have required configuring Moby, uh, the Moby daemon to register the runtime with it. So in the bad old days, uh, yeah, Moby's configuration system is not really suitable for stateless deployments. There's uh, no real affordances for configuration like drop-in files or uh, drop-in directories or anything of that sort. There are, you've got command line arguments, and you have a single JSON config file, and that's it. Uh, some distro package to, uh, like to install a side-by-side -side runtime would have had to modify the daemon config file, which might have been customized by the user with all the hazards that entails. Like, while, because it is JSON, yeah, installation could probably be okay, but I shudder to think of all the ways things could go wrong when uninstalling. So I just didn't want to go anywhere near that. So my first attempt, uh, I did attempt to extend Moby's configuration system uh, to support more stateless drop-in files but it turned to be a huge project where I would have had to basically boil the ocean, totally overhaul how config works in Moby, and all of this just for additional runtimes. So I looked for a, a, another way to do it without having to touch the configuration, uh, configuration problem. Well, container D doesn't need any configuration to use different runtime v2 shims. You just tell it the name of the shim, and it just automatically works it out. There really isn't much magic, actually. 
Uh, when containerd is instructed to start a container uh, using the runtime, I'm using the example io.containerd.foo.bar, uh, it just looks for a binary, so it takes the last two parts of it, uh, prepends containerd shim, and searches for that in the, in the path environment variable, list of directories. So I chose to instead add support for additional runtime v2 shims so that Moby could just leverage the same functionality directly, the same stateless configuration magic. And now, once we do get around to packaging C run for side-by-side -side installation with run C on Mirantis container runtime, future, future, <laughs> Um, we'll be doing so by pretty much just packaging up a copy of the run C shim that's been tweaked to start C run instead. So that was the first, uh, first problem solved. Uh, now we could select io.containerd.cata.v2 as the runtime, and cata containers could be started. Just a handful of little issues that needed to be sorted out. You know, little edge cases, you know, like um, networking, like any networking. No one would need that in a container, right? No one would miss that. So, uh, you wanna take this? Oh, I can take this one. So yeah, networking uh, didn't uh, work with uh, Kata's uh, QMU-based hypervisor because of a little problem with the way Kata implemented uh, OCI runtime hooks. Uh, for those unfamiliar, uh, hooks are programs which are specified in the uh, containers, like OCI container configuration file, that's passed to the runtime. Uh, and uh, the runtime then goes and executes uh, various, the different hooks at different stages in the container's lifecycle. And, well, as you can imagine, since I'm talking about networking, that uh, conventionally hooks are used to set up containers networking. And in particular, Moby relies on the pre-start hook for its network configuration. Now, notably about this hook is that it predates the uh, uh, OCI runtime spec. And version 1.0 of the OCI runtime spec uh, did codify the behavior of the pre-start hook, uh, but it also deprecated it in favor of uh, more granular hooks. Unfortunately, it codified the behavior of the pre-start hook in a way which um, differed from how run C implements it. And so when uh, CATA containers went to and implemented the pre-start hook, they implemented it according to the spec, perfectly sensibly. Um, and that's actually why container networking did not work. Because Moby, having co-evolved with run C, with run C coming from initially the Moby sources, uh, it expects the pre-start hook to be invoked the same way that run C does. And so the solution was uh, to uh, modify CATA containers to invoke pre-start hooks the same way that run C does, at the same point in the life cycle and in the same execution environment. And um, also by patching the OCI runtime spec to match up with the on the ground reality so that no other runtimes will make the same, uh, uh, run into the same incompatibilities. And also my uh, little pet theory for why uh, no one else noticed that there was a problem with the runtime spec, that um, pro I'm guessing that all the other high level runtimes, uh, like the ones that would interact with container D and run C, um, just did not have the historical baggage of Moby and so avoided the pre-start hook and instead used the more granular hooks which were all implemented the same across the board. Uh, as well, yeah, uh, one of uh, CATA's container's other hypervisor choices, Cloud Hypervisor, uh, just uh, was not uh, working with networking because uh, it did not, did not support uh, network interface hot plug. Uh, but as has been explained to me, <laughs> um, it is, uh, was, uh, that came from uh, it starting out as a copy of the Firecracker uh, hypervisor's agent, runner, whatever component, uh, which Firecracker, which does not at all support um, network hawk plug. So that was just copied over despite cloud hypervisor, the actual hypervisor component supporting it. So it was apparently just a, a simple thing to fix. 
And the last interesting, uh, well, not the last interesting issue, one of the other interesting issues um, was that, yeah, if you try to use Docker exec on a CATA container uh, started with uh, Moby, um, it would work until the exec exited, and then the container would exit, and the Docker exec command would hang. So uh, that's not helpful. Uh, what, was, what turned out to be happening uh, was that Moby was actually misinterpreting the exit events uh, from container D for the exec process. Uh, so it saw the, it received the exit event for the exec process, but it was misinterpreting it as the container's init process exiting, and then was acting accordingly. Going and then cleaning up the container, killing the whole process tree, the whole usual thing. And then leaving the exec hanging, because well, the exec hasn't exited yet, right? Uh, so yeah, the root cause of that was a flawed assumption in Moby, specifically that uh, the, uh, the process IDs, uh, or the, I should say the PIDs, uh, in the host system of the containers init process and an ex its exec process were all distinct. Now, that is true when all the processes are running on the host kernel. Well, CATA containers run in a virtual machine on a different kernel, and so that assumption is not true. Uh, what happens is CATA goes and reports the same PID for all, pr all container processes, specifically the PID of the hypervisor. And so the fix for this uh, was to modify Moby to instead uh, use the process ID string, which is an arbitrary string in the uh, container D uh, API uh, that's assigned to every, every uh, task and process started through container D and reported back through the events. So in that way, there's no ambiguity uh, and allows Moby to then correlate uh, the exit events to exactly which process, which started container process it was without uh, any troubles with VMs. And uh, there was one more incompatibility, which um, actually uh, we had only discovered uh, a few days ago while we were preparing, to, preparing the demo for this talk. <laughs> yeah, um, all currently released versions of Moby cannot start containers uh, with uh, CATA version 3.2.0 alpha 3 unless the uh, CPU shares option is explicitly set when starting the container, or creating the container, rather. Um, as it turns out, uh, Moby has, as far as I can tell, always been uh, unconditionally emitting the, um, uh, in the uh, container uh, config, uh, this resource limit, Linux CPU shares property. Uh, it's a C groups thing. Uh, it's all unconditionally been uh, um, emitting it, even if it was not set by the user. And basically the user wanted to like, leave it at whatever the system default was. Trouble was, um, oh yeah, also that yeah, property is optional in the runtime spec. So really the sensible thing to do is just leave it out if the user doesn't want it set. Well, Moby was uh, unconditionally outputting it and it was setting it to zero. Trouble is, um, the minimum legal value that the kernel accepts is two. And uh, yeah, this has gone unnoticed forever because run C t sees the value of zero and says, okay, looks like it's unset, and runs along merrily. And um, yeah, earlier versions of the CATA agent uh, running inside the VM uh, were more tolerant of those invalid values. Now, uh, the CATA agent does distinguish between set and unset uh, for that, that uh, CPU shares uh, resource configuration. And so uh, goes and tries to set the container CPU shares to zero through system D. And system D correctly returns an error saying zero's out of range. And then the container fails to start because CATA handles errors like a well-behaved software should. Now, CATA is arguably behaving correctly here, and Moby's wrong. And uh, I have uh, gotten a fix to Moby that's now been merged into master, but it's not yet uh, made its way into any release. Now, how for the future? What is the future of Kata and Moby? Well, 
really, the diversity of, uh, of run times is beneficial for the whole container ecosystem. Uh, as, as demonstrated by uh, all those uh, incompatibilities and issues that came up, um, having uh, a runtime implementation which does not attempt to be entirely compatible with run C and which is not written in Go or written in C it is uh, really helpful for challenging all these implicit assumptions uh, in the implementations. And so yeah, that uh, CPU shares issue uh, we just mentioned is a great example of this. Uh, as the uh, CATA v3 agent is written in Rust, it follows different conventions internally uh, than the Go code bases of uh, Mobi and Run C. So it's a Rust code base, and so the uh, option type is pervasive and ergonomic to use. Lucky Rust developers. I'm jealous. And so it makes it natural uh, to distinguish between unset, an unset value and a set to zero value in a Rust code base. In a Go code base, zero means unset, except when it doesn't, except when it does. And it or your options, other option in Go is to use pointers to represent optional values, which has its own unergonomic stuff, not to mention all the performance stuff of spilling onto the heap. And it was actually, um, like, the reason why that all went, uh, why the bug was happening in Mobi and why Run C was, uh, was like, not, uh, was not falling over was uh, because of the conversion between those two Go conventions. Uh, Moby was using the zero means unset convention internally, uh, but then on the uh, like the actual serialization to JSON, the um, uh, the pointer to un as unset convention was used, and then on the run C side, it unmarshals JSON using the uh, pointer as unset convention, and then converting it to the zero is unset convention. And so run C couldn't, like, couldn't tell the difference because both of those get coalesced to zero. And also, now more, more concretely uh, for the future, uh, well, I'd love to go and uh, support uh, Kubernetes pods uh, with uh, CRI Docker D. And now, in order to support kube pods, uh, Cata will need to know which containers need to share resources so it can group them in the same virtual machine. This has uh, historically been communicated uh, to Cata through OCI annotations. And Mobi has historically lacked support for setting OCI annotations on containers. Uh, I've recently gone and added that support into at least the Mobi Docker engine component uh, in preparation. And all that remains is uh, wiring it up to CRI Docker D. Contributions welcome. Although, now with the uh, Container D 1.7 Sandbox API, maybe we want to leverage that instead. Uh, the thing is, Mobi still targets uh, the version 1.6 Container D API. So uh, the Sandbox API, which is newer, 1.7, uh, we, we cannot depend on it yet. And there's not been any work, no one's even thought about uh, how we would uh, plumb that uh, can, the Sandbox API up through Mo Mobi's Engine API so that CRI Docker D can leverage it. So once again, contributions welcome, please. And uh, lastly, would you like to take this one? Okay, thank you. And so, well, also there's a Docker command Docker Connect, then to a Docker Network Connect, then he is able to connect a container to a different network, and then, is, then it is started on, and uh, this will require some modification of the container's network. So, with, but, but uh, when we drop Docker support, we also removed, we used to have support with a Kata monitor, Kata network monitor to, to do it. But uh, when we drop Docker's support, we decided to remove the legacy code, uh, all the legacy code as well. So then it ended up being missing when we end, end Docker support back. And also, we are, since we are rewriting the Kata runtime in Rust, we, we may need, to, need, to need a Rust version of con, um, container network monitor. Then 
this work is being designed and uh, it is being proposed as a su summer code project of Carapaneers and uh, we have a Gidney Code Camp project and uh, a university student is actively working on it. So this is to be expect expected. We should have it in the next release. So, so next. All right, our, now. Uh, our demo. Mm -hmm. Where's the demo page? Demo time! <laughs> All right. This is going to be fun because I don't have the screens mirrored. Okay, first up. Uh, oh boy, I'm going to do this with three hands. Swap to this? No? Oh, okay. Oh, thank you. Okay. So, first, to show there's nothing up our sleeves, uh, let's actually do this. There. there we go. No config file at all. And just for reference, there's uname a. Uh, and got a container. Ta da! <laughs> and also, just to show, there really is nothing. My sleeve, running with run C. So you can see, that is very much running in a totally different kernel. All right, thank you. And we still have a couple minutes. Uh, are there any questions? What's the target for GA on this? Um, you can try it out today and let us know what, uh, what bugs you run into. It's going to be very much an ongoing process. Anybody else? All right, thank you. Thank you.